Uh, welcome to the part one of the fundamentals of Python series. Now, for those of you who don't know what Python is all about, uh, you know, Python is one of the most popular scripting languages today. And you know, in more uh, technical terms, it's an interpreted object oriented high level programming language with uh, dynamic semantics. And, you know, people often fall in love with Python uh, because it's very easy to learn. Uh, it's easy to use and you know, most of all, it's powerful, uh, portable and open source and a huge community backs Python day in and day out. So, you know, Python is something which is never going to run out in the years to come. There are new things being created around Python you know, every single day. Uh, organizations have started adopting Python in their day to day business. And the reason why uh, Python is being adopted is, you know, because of all these uh, all these things you see on the screen. And you know, the biggest thing is that it's object oriented and it supports object oriented programming, meaning, you know, everything in Python can be modularly defined. Uh, it can be defined with the help of things called objects. And, you know, through the series, we will understand what these objects are and how we can use them. So what's part one all about? Uh, part one is all about variables and basic data types and you know we'll be looking at the, the fundamentals of how to create variables and you know what basic data types does python allow now uh, variables are you know nothing but containers uh, for storing data uh, you know if you look at the example here uh, it says name is equal to john the, the left side of uh, this particular statement here is the variable name and the right side is the data value and this particular data value is stored in this variable name called name so it's as simple as that so variables are nothing but you know storage areas uh, memory areas where data types different data types can be stored now when i say data types what do i essentially mean now, data types are in Python are basically divided into two parts, uh, basic and advanced. So in the basic data types, there are four data types defined. Uh, the first two are basically numeric types of data, uh, integers and floats. Now, what do I mean by integers? Integers are nothing but uh, simple numbers. Numbers such as 3, 4, 5, 20, 100, and so on. And floating point numbers are nothing but you know, numbers with a decimal point. Uh, meaning 3.5, 4.5, and uh, so on and so forth. So Python has the ability to deal with both integers and floating point numbers. Um, secondly, uh, Python has the ability to deal with strings, and string is another basic data type. Uh, strings are nothing but a sequence of characters, uh, which are enclosed within either single or double quotes. And later we look at how these can be defined. And uh, strings can be anything like, you know, names, uh, days of the week, uh, and so on. And the last uh, basic data type, which is important to know, is the Boolean data type, which is holds two values, true or false. Uh, it's basically like a switch you operate in your house for turning on and off the light. So the on state is one state and the off state is another state. Uh, the on and the off correspond to true and false here. Now, let's see how we can, you know, define variables and all these basic data types on uh, Python. And this will essentially be our first step into programming with Python. So what are we going to be using today? We're going to be using a development environment uh, called Jupyter Notebooks. And these Jupyter Notebooks uh, would be on a cloud service called Google Collaboratory. And how do I get to this cloud service? Uh, you can use this link here to essentially get to the cloud service. And uh, once you get there, uh, what you will notice is something like this. And we're going to be using a new uh, Python 3 notebook in order to uh, begin our Python coding. So when I open a Python 3 notebook, this is what it looks like. You have a blank canvas where you can write text and code. And this is the reason why they are called Jupyter Notebooks, because you can essentially write uh, both these things. The code button here is uh, used to add something called a code cell 
into the canvas. Uh, the text button here is used to add something known as a text or a markdown cell into the canvas. So let's go ahead and click this text cell. And uh, you see that it gets up uh, a text box or a text cell. And what you can do is uh, you can type, you know, basic text, things like uh, variables and basic data types, which is the you know lesson for today. Uh, I can use some basic formatting here uh, to make it either bold, uh, to have some bullets, or give it an indentation. So let's just uh, keep it at bold and uh, run this particular cell. Uh, in order to run a cell, you can use the shortcut keys uh, Shift Enter uh, on your keyboard, or for code cells, you can also use this uh, play button here. Now. In the code cells, you can write Python code, and that's where you start defining, uh, you know, all your variables and data types. So if I write something like this, uh, say five, for example, uh, five is an integer, which is one of the basic data types. Uh, similarly, I can define something called 5.5, right? And this is a floating point data. Uh, similarly, if I write my name here, uh, these are essentially string data types which are defined within double quotes uh, you can also define them within single quotes and if i mention a true or a false uh, these are basically boolean data types now when i write all of these you know just like this on a code cell none of these are being stored anywhere uh, they're just you know there on the cell so if I want to store, you know, any of these data types into a storage container, that's where I go ahead and, you know, define something known as a variable. So let me define a variable called uh, name as we did on the slide earlier. And let's put a generic name called, you know, let's say John, for example, into this. Now when I run the cell, you notice that nothing is printed out but the cell ran successfully. What this means is that John is now stored inside this particular variable called name. And you know, when I hover my mouse over this, uh, notice the, the box, the tooltip box which comes above the name. Uh, it says that it holds a particular string and the string is John. And this is the storage container it creates in memory. Now, if I want to use this variable name or print this variable name on the console to see what's inside it uh, i will use a command in python called print and inside this print command i can give the name of the variable and run the cell and now notice that as soon as the cell encounters the print statement it prints out john which is the data value in the variable name name now, I have the ability to give comments to my code cells, and comments are an integral part of code because uh, it allows users and other people to know what's in the code cell. So comments are defined by you know, the hash symbol, and I can call this cell as introduction to variables, for example. Now, this variable here, uh, call name stores a value John, which is a string data type. So let's call this uh, as a string data type. Now, similar to this, uh, variables can store numbers, or it can also store floating point values, right? So this uh, was integers. Uh, similarly, you can store floating point values as well. So let's call, you know, name a variable called float num and say is equal to 4.5. I can print a uh, float num, which you know prints it out on the console for me. Now, similar to the strings and the uh, numbers, I can also store uh, Boolean values in a particular variable. So Boolean values can be either true or false, and I can print the Boolean value as well, and that gives me false. So all these data types form the fundamental building blocks. Um, strings are primarily used to write you know, big chunks of text. Uh, numbers are often used to depict uh, values in most cases and industries. 
Uh, Booleans are often used in you know decision making statements. Whenever we want to evaluate a condition to be true or false, um, that's when we make use of the Boolean basic data type. Now, in the next part of the video, in part two of the series, uh, we'll touch base upon how each of these basic data types can be used more comprehensively. You know, what operations can you do on each of these data types? And, uh, you know, that will give us an insight into using basic data types more efficiently.